With the introduction of simulation nodes in Blender 3.6, the jump node system has become a whole lot more powerful. And one thing in particular that the simulation nodes are useful for is to manipulate points. So in this video, I will go through how to make a node setup which can be used on rigged and animated meshes to create an effect like this. Let's get into it. First, we need a rigged and animated mesh. So for convenience sake, I will download this robot mesh with this running animation from Mixamo. After importing the downloaded FPX file, I will select the armature and open the graph editor down here in the timeline. Right click the topmost level of the armature layers, which in this case is named armature, and under extrapolation mode, select make cyclic. This just makes it so that the animation keeps looping. I will also scale up the armature by 4 without applying the scale. This makes it so that we easier can spawn a lot of points on the mesh. Once you have your animated mesh ready to go, let's set up the geometry nodes. Make a new collection and add a cube or any other mesh primitive. Then head over to the Geometry Nodes workspace and add a new node tree. The reason for why we are not adding the nodes directly to the animated mesh is because the workflow and adaptability of the setup is better when using another object as an intermediary in my opinion. Add a simulation zone and connect the simulation output to the group output and leave the simulation input disconnected since we won't use it. The way the simulation zone works is that every operation that is performed within it is repeated every frame. So for example, if we add a transform node here and set the scale to 1.1 and then press play on the timeline, each frame the mesh will increase its scale by 0.1. So in short, the operations performed within the simulation zone are added on top of whatever operations has already been performed on previous frames, instead of overwriting them. The first step in our setup is to add points to the simulation. To do this, we first need the mesh that we will use to generate points. So drag the mesh from the outliner into the node tree. And then set the object info node to relative. To generate points, we could use the distribute points on faces node. However, those points would essentially create a shell of points around the mesh. A much better looking point distribution would be if we actually fill the mesh with points. And there is a pretty simple way to do that. Just add a mesh to volume node, followed by a distribute points in volume node. Then set the density to something like 500. To add these points to the simulation, we can simply add a join jump node and connect the points in volume node to it. If we play the animation now, we will add a new set of points to the simulation every frame. And to add a more interesting distribution over time, simply add a scene time node and connect the frame output to the seed input of the distribute points in volume node. That way the point distribution will always be different even when the animation of the mesh loops. Next, let's make it so that the points we add shrink over time. To do this, we need to first store some value to the points when we add them to the simulation. We then need to change that value over time and then set the radii of the points to this new value. To do this, add a store named attribute node, a math node set to add, and a named attribute node. In the name fields of the two named attribute nodes, type LT. And finally, connect the named attribute node to the add node. Set the bottom value to something like 0.1, then connect that node to the value input of the store named attribute node. To use this LT value to change the size of the points, add a set point radius node and connect the named attribute node to the radius input. If we play the animation now, we can see that the points are growing instead of shrinking. That's because our LT value starts out as 0, and on every frame it gets 0.1 added to it. So all we need to do to reverse the effect 
is to remap the values using a map range node. Since we want the final size of the points to be zero, change the two max value to zero. We can then use the two min value as the starting size of the points. In my case, I will set the value to 0 0.02. Now, while the size of the points eventually reach zero, they are actually still there and being calculated every frame, which means that performance will drop over time, and in extreme cases, cause Blender to crash. To fix this, we need to delete any points that we can no longer see. So to do this, add a delete geometry node, and a compare node set to equal. Connect the result output to the selection input. And then connect the map range node to the A input of the equal node. This way, any point with a radius of zero will be deleted and removed from the simulation. So now that we have the basic point functionality in place, let's add some style to it. The first addition will be to add some noise to the particles. Add a set position node, a noise texture, and a vector math node set to subtract. And connect them like this. Then set the bottom values of the subtract node to 0.5. By subtracting 0.5 from the noise texture, we turn it from being biased in the positive x, y, and z direction to being unbiased. For the noise values, I will use 1 for scale and 0 for everything else. Next, to add some variation to the noise, set it to 4D. Then, add a scene time node and connect the seconds output to the W input. This makes it so that the shape of the noise change over time. I will also add the ability to make the points move in a specific direction. And to do this, just add another set position node. Now we can add directional movement to the particles on top of the movement from the noise by setting the offset in the set position node. The last thing I will add is the ability to set the color of the particles. First, add a new material in the materials tab. Then in a node tree, after the simulation zone, add a set material node. and select your material in a dropdown. In order to render particles like this, make sure that you set the render engine to cycles. Next, in the shading workspace, add an attribute node. And type LT in the name field. Since this is a raw LT value without any remapping, it will start at zero when the particles are added, and increase over time. So we could for example use it in combination with a color ramp to create this color gradient. Or we could remap it in the shader, and use it as the emission strength. Basically, you can control anything in the shader with this value. So now that the setup has all the functionality it needs, let's turn it into something we can reuse easily without having to change things in a node tree every time. The key to this is to expose some crucial inputs to the modifiers tab, so that we can adjust them individually on each object with the setup applied to it. 
and we can do this by connecting these inputs to the group input. The density of the distribute points in volume node, the two min value of the map range node, the offset input of the last set position node, the material input of the set material node, and the object input of the object info node. Press N to open the property sidebar, and rename the two min input to point radius. I will also add controls for some other values by adding math nodes at the multiply to them and connecting them to the group input. By adding a multiply node between the named attribute node and the map range node, the multiply value can be connected to the group input to add a control for how fast the particles will shrink. I will name this input shrinking speed. By adding a multiply node between a scene time node and a noise texture node, the multiply value can be used to control how fast the noise change. I will name this input noise speed. And lastly, by adding a vector math node set to scale between the vector subtract node and the set position node, the scale value can be used to control how much influence the noise will have on the particles. I will name this input noise strength. And that's about it. I think this is a really fun setup to play around with, and I would love to see what you make with it. So I hope you found this video helpful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.